In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to open and clean your computer. The most common question people have is, will cleaning out the dust inside my computer make it go faster? Well, that can depend on certain factors. Uh, let's say for example, you just got your computer, it's three months old and it's slowly starting to get a bit slower. And you're wondering, can you make it run as if it was brand new? Most likely not. It's probably not due to dust accumulation, but more about how many files you have in your computer and whatnot. If, for example, um, such as myself, I play video games on my computer, and I haven't dusted out my computer in about a year, and I was playing this one game, frame rates were going low, it was just generally lagging, I decided to open it up, clean it, and I noticed that a lot of dust had flown out of the fan, which is dedicated to the video card. and. Um, it just started running great, it was running really smooth. Other benefits of cleaning out the computer is basically it cleans out any dust accumulation within the fans that keep your computer cool, uh, the fan for your power supply, and the fan on the processor itself. By keeping those parts cooler, it'll make your parts last longer. If they tend to overheat, it's probably due to the fans not spinning properly, which is usually a result of too much dust being in the way. So that's that's basically the main reason for dusting out your computer and it's very simple to do it's really easy don't get intimidated by opening up your computer worrying that you might ruin something just make sure that your computer is completely unplugged from everything especially the power cord I can't emphasize that enough another thing you can't emphasize enough is do not use a vacuum to clean your computer well there's a couple of reasons for that one is that there won't be enough suction power to get all the dust out and if there is that much suction power, I guarantee you something will get stuck in the vacuum and damage your computer. Another problem is if it has a metal end, it could cause a static shock to the computer. What you need is actually a air in a can. It's just this, it's literally is what it is. It's a air in a can. It's just pressurized air. It's really safe if you get it on you. It's no big deal. It's just air. And um, depending also on your computer case, you might need a screwdriver. I highly recommend a multi-end screwdriver, they're pretty cheap and apart from opening up your computer depending on what screws it has at the back, you can use it for general purposes around the house You know, later on, it's always good to have one. Uh, computer shops, I've looked at their price listings, they charge roughly $25 to clean your computer and with air in a can and the gas money you spend to drive to your local computer shop to buy air in a can, you could probably spend like 5 or 6 bucks. So. There's no need to pay someone to do it. It's a total ripoff because it's really, really simple. So for those of you who feel confident and already going straight to cleaning the computer, you can jump ahead here. Uh, for those of you who aren't too confident on how to open your computer, I'm going to do that right now. I got three desktop computers behind me for good reason. Computer cases tend to be very, very unique in design and how you open them. So I'm going to run through them really quickly. I got three different desktops, all have different methods on how to open them. Okay, so I'm going to open the most easiest computer I have to open. And it does have two screws on the side here. You could use a screwdriver, but they're so simple to access that you can just do it by hand. And once you remove any latches or screws, etc., um, you want to be careful as you actually slide off the case. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention is I have a cloth on my desk. The reason for that is because most computer cases at the bottom edges here tend to be metal. And you don't want to scratch any nice surface that you have. So anyway, I got any safety clips or pins removed. And this desktop is literally just a matter of sliding it and just taking it off like that. Now, if you're not too sure and you're doing this for the first time, I suggest you remove this panel off very slowly and carefully. You don't want any wires being attached to this and kind of, you know, pulling on the power supply wires or anything else just for safety reasons. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, this computer case is slightly different from the one I had before. I can't remove the screws simply by my hand, so I'm going to have to use my screwdriver. And for this particular case, once you have both screws off, there's actually a safety latch on the back. Okay, so I removed the screws, but you know the, the panel won't come off. That's because there's actually a latch down here which you have to press down and then 
the panel will come off. Simple as that. Okay, and this is the last computer which I've already loosened the screw. There's only one. And once it's off, the panel is actually on this side of the computer, as you notice compared to my other two. And it only had one screw. And once you remove it, it's just a simple matter of sliding it off. Now, for people who have a high-end case or tend to build their own computers, I don't think I have to teach you this part because you build the computer, but in some cases if you buy a ready-made computer, they might even have two panels you can remove. A lot of new cases are designed so that the majority of the parts are accessible on this side, but the power supply wires feed on this side just to keep this side of the computer nice and clean. So if that's the case, you might have to open both sides, but by opening one side, you'll know whether or not you have to open the other. And you know, if, if one side is just not opening, don't try to force the other side open because like for this example, this computer has no screws here which can be removed because this panel is not supposed to be removed, only this side. So it's just common sense on that part. You'll know which side you have to open just by looking at the back. Now let's clean the computer. Okay, when it comes to the part of actually cleaning the computer, make sure you do it in some grummy old clothes or clothes that you know are going to go in the laundry right away. And as for the location, do it in a place where you know you're going to end up cleaning afterwards or maybe in your garage where you don't mind dust flying around. Um, the instructions on how to use the air in a can are usually on the can itself. Um, but just to clarify, don't ever shake the can. Um, use short bursts, really short, just like this. And um, you'll notice that as you use it, the can will get significantly cold, usually at the bottom, to the point where even steam will build up. It's not dangerous, but if that does happen, just leave everything for a few minutes, come back when the can has warmed up a little bit. The colder it gets, it needs a bit of time to warm up a bit afterwards. So when you're actually cleaning it, it's just short bursts. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I have a ton of dust flying out. It's kind of gross, but you might have the same issue. And just keep spraying in every little corner you can, even in the fans processor, everything, anywhere you can reach, and do the same for the back of the computer itself. Just generally spray in all the ports you have, power supply, and that's it. Once you're done, your computer's clean, you should be good to go. Just plug everything back in as it was before, and like I said, you may or may not notice an increase in speed performance. It depends on how much dust built up in the first place. Okay, I just watched the clip I just recorded and yes, the camera did pick up all the dust. It was really gross and that was approximately after a year of dust buildup. I'm pretty sure you're, you must have dust buildup of like 2-3 years. You can only imagine how much more disgusting it might be in there. So do clean it out. Uh, you know, if you found that useful, subscribe to my channel, check out my website for more tech news, tech tips, etc. And thank you for watching.